I, I never really saw myself as an actor. Um, I had acted at school. I played a shepherd in the nativity play. Um, I, the year after that, I played one of the kings in the nativity play. Garth's not bad. You know, he could have gone on to do other things, possibly. I don't think he's that interested, but, uh, you know, he seems to, you know, remember his lines, which I suppose he should do as he, you know, as he wrote them that morning. I do tend to, um, you know, do a little bit of Stanislavski on. Have you heard of him? Stanislavski and Psycho Technique. Do you know what that is? I do that. Two takes, yeah. If you can't, you know, basically nail the thing in two, you know, then you're, you know, pissing in the wind, I think. If you can't get it in one take, then you're not an actor, in my opinion. It's an odd one. Dean's not an actor. But I told him at the time, I didn't want an act. Don't, not interested. I want the truth. Dean's one of the truest people I've ever met. He will not lie to me. Um, so, I just wanted that. I wanted to capture him. As far as I was concerned, he's my boss of sorts. I didn't, I, I, it was more about not wanting to have anyone else as my boss who wasn't, who I couldn't trust. I don't like, I don't like being bossed. I don't like having a boss. And I knew that if I cast anyone in the role of Thornton Reed, I'd probably sack them within a couple of weeks because they'd just rub me up the wrong way. Dean had never acted. Now, I know Dean. I mean, I, I'd known Dean for uh, uh, a fair few sort of years before we actually did this. Uh, he never spoke about, you know, sort of wishing to act. It was just about saving money. Um, yeah, Dean had never acted at all. I remember on the first day that we got there, um, we had to, you know, do some sort of camera tests. And, uh, first thing, Dean would do this. It would be a case of, of him going, can you see what I'm doing there? Now, just by blinking of the eyes, I'm making myself weaker. You see, as an actual performer, one is much weaker, you know, when blinking the eyes. So I said, Dean, stop. Think about next month's rent. Think about your tax bill, you know, trying to bring the guy down. Straight away he got it. Any emotion you care to mention, I can do now, thanks to Mr Todd Rivers. It comes from the shoes, comes from the feet, yeah, it comes from rhythm. If I were to do terror, it's not too much, you see. Because before, with terror, I'd be going, that's too much, that camera's like a bloody magnifying glass. Um, you can see everything, you can see thought. Uh, so you're in for a treat, um, hope you can't. Um, but it can actually. I like his vacancy. I like it. I think there's a rawness to it. It's almost like he's made a pact with Lucifer. You know, and Thornton Reed, I think if the series had gone on, we would have discovered how Thornton Reed had kissed the bottom of Lucifer. I'm a great believer in Garth writing, and so I didn't want to do too much with the words. And Todd was saying, perhaps I was doing too little with the words. And I thought, all right, I'll take that on board. And so, you know, if I was picking up the phone, instead of just going, good morning, which is how I started off, I go, good morning. You know, just give it a, a little bit of something. How do you pick up the phone at Beelzebuk's? Hello, Dean Lerner. Is uh, how I pick it up. If I'm at Beelzebuk's, because it's important to give a good... Um, it's important to give the customer confidence, and so I will pick up the phone and use a bit of a voice. So you're an actor when you're a publisher, so I'll pick up the phone and go, Hello, Dean Lerner. How might I help you? Can I interest you in a book? Which one would you like? So that's two books on, on their way to you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. And that makes them feel that they're in safe hands because the guy's been courteous, he's got the two books that they had, that, that, they, that they'd wanted, and he's putting them in the post the next day, in a brown paper envelope so that the wife doesn't see. How would you answer the phone at home? Dean. I think he, I think he actually could have made up a lot of those lines while he was going. I mean, it looks as if he did. Um, he's very good, though. He's not an actor, but, um, you know, not many of them were. Who are your main inspirations as an actor? As an actor? Um, Anyone from Star Trek, really? Well... Uh, no. Well, I'm speaking personally. I'm... 
my great inspirations. I've always admired Chuck Norris. Um, but that's really, and I know that he's not a Shakespearean actor as such, but he was the chief inspiration for my action moments. He's a cinematic actor. But I really like the guy who played Maverick. What's his name? Garner. James Garner. A wonderful actor. It's, does he do the shampoo? Did he do Heart to Heart? Or was that Robert Wagner? He's good as well. I've um, always liked Mr T. Mr. T, sadly, is no longer with us. I tried to put on Othello with Mr. T, but he wouldn't get on the plane. I mean, he literally wouldn't... I thought it was just in the show, but he actually refused to get on the plane. Oh, that's true. I mean, they wrote He didn't in. call me a fool or ask for milk, but he wouldn't he was get very on the polite. Plane. He was very polite about it, not like B.A. Baracus, but he, he did refuse. You're quite yeah. right. He was a lovely chap. Really nice. A um, bit too Christian for me. Yeah. And he's no longer with us. Or is he? I don't know. I think he, maybe he's just ill. I did uh, Love Sabers Lost with um, Peter Wingard, uh, who was, in, I mean, he came to a sticky end, but um, an incredible actor. You know, I would say as good, you know, as any, you know, of the big names. Gilgood, whatever. Um, Wingard definitely had it, right up to the end. I tend to sort of change my opinion on acting the older I get, but there are a few um, rules that I've stuck to f from, you know, f basically from day one. Um, it is like beats. Acting is like beats. Standing on stage, the best kind of training um, an actor can ever get. Try telling that, you know, that to an actor now. You know, they think, you know, you're a fool. All right then, Mr. Sanso from um, EastEnders or whatever, you know, get yourself on... Um, you know, stage in front of 500 people, if that's how many you can get in the theatre these days, I doubt even that. And, um, you know, reach the man right at the back of the hall, you know, and at the same time keep the intimacy for, you know, the first row. You know, that's not easy. Can't learn that kind of thing on TV, I'm afraid. The thing that I, uh, the thing that I normally do is, I mean, I, I think of myself as being a human drum kit. Now, I can actually play the drums, which makes this much easier to describe to you. So it's as if I'm either sat at a drum kit, and I'm going... <laughs> and you're keeping up a beat, usually 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four is much easier, because other people know what 4-4 four, four is. Once you start to, you know, change and waltz and things, people don't know where the fuck they are. So if you keep it, say, 4-4, four, four, and, uh, and you say the lines, something like... Scotch mist? What Scotch mist? For somebody like Michael Caine, his beat would be obviously very simple. And would be a... <laughs> where it's just, you know, like a march, if you like. Whereas somebody like... Um, who do I like? Um, Christopher Walken, for instance. Now, he would have something completely different, more of a... <laughs> Do you see what I mean? What about Garth and Dean? Garth and Dean? They wouldn't be aware of any beats or any kind of style at all. Garth would just be... <coughs> <coughs> Dean's would be... Imagine, just imagine somebody mentally retarded sat with a drum kit. Imagine the noise that they would make. That's what you got with Dean, I think. A good actor, I think, is always somebody who is very easy on the eye. And I don't just mean, you know, looking good. I mean, um, in terms of easy to watch, um, but at the same time has a kind of edge. So you're not quite sure of what they'll do next. And that's all down to timing. Now, I could read the same lines to you in three or four different ways, and, and I pretty much guarantee you'd only remember one of the actual performances. I could read two flat and two you know, how I would normally do them. And That's all it is. <coughs> the words, I think, are pretty much, I wouldn't say um, immaterial, but um, um, it is all about speech patterns, gaps that you leave, air, you know, that you take, that kind of thing. Very, very short 
line, but it meant so much, you see. And uh, your sort of current young 23-year-old TV actor would probably read that in the cab on the way to the job. That would be the first time he'd have actually seen that, I think. Got on set, stood against his opposite, waited for, I don't know, probably a second to make sure that the camera was back on him or whatever, and then would give you a reading of, you and he were buddies, weren't you? Looking at him. Which is always a very, very selfish way to act, but it's what I see every day now. You and he were buddies, weren't you? Sort of thing, as opposed to possibly looking at the door, which I believe the scene was, looking back at him. Back at the door. You and he were buddies, weren't you? Need I say more? Need I say more? I mean, I turned on, what was it the other day, um, that um, bloody awful um, Cogni soap, what's that called? Eastender. Yeah, and the most ugliest, disgusting looking people, men and women, this fat bloke, I haven't got a clue what his name was, red in the face. I had to turn the bloody thing, I couldn't hear a word he was saying. And it was all um, <laughs> that, that type of thing. And then this Cockney Sparrow, like young Barbara Windsor type, dyed black hair, looked like a fucking raven, near enough. And, uh, you know, this is supposed to be, you know, serious stuff. I never seen anything like it. It was like a pantomime, my friend. Really awful. And uh, I understand 12 million people actually turn on to that every single day. Is it on every day? I imagine it is now. Most, you know, most of these things are. It was. It was like a, I don't know, like a modern-day freak show. You know, that's what you've, you know, got to you know, basically contend with. I'd rather uh, bow out gracefully. Thank you very much. Thank you.